is a problem. It's a very big problem. Despite the city being arguably the most modern and better organized in Nigeria, Abuja, the nation's capital, is gradually turning into an open field where people defecate. Beneath the good roads, exotic cars, and gigantic edifice, the federal capital territory is adorned with a long shadows of irritating common sights of people defecating in the open. For those who engage in passing bodily waste in open areas, it is just one call of nature that they must answer any time they are pressed. It doesn't matter where and how. This is the mindset that thrives in many parts of Abuja, especially in the slums and suburbs. In Daki Biu, one of such slums, residents have turned a field of gamelia trees into a big open toilet. Be careful when someone coming out of here offers you a handshake. The menace of indiscriminate defecation is more prevalent in slums like Daiki Biu due to obvious reasons. It is an overcrowded informal settlement with no permanent structures, little or no access to water, inadequate sanitation and no drainage or waste management system. Most houses here do not have toilets. Much people they can just only manage to pay for a single room. Pay for a single room and no toilet there. So you should expect anywhere somebody will just go and sit down and poop there and just left. And uh, the cause of it, I will put it, is a poverty to be sincere. So what I see there in this issue is individual will put it in this manner because it's not healthy. It's not encourageable, it's not advisable to be pooping or wee wee all around where people are living. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, says 25% or 46 million Nigerians defecate openly, 33 million of them living in rural areas. This perpetuates a vicious cycle of diseases like diarrhea and intestinal worm infections, typhoid, cholera, hepatitis, polio, trachoma, and others. The littered environment and the People easily, uh, easily caught up with enteric fever, and diarrhea diseases. These are some of the a lot of challenges mm. you see in, the summer, in mm. such environment. In the because the environment is litter in such a way, it gives room to breeding of mosquitoes. We room to breeding of mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mosquito give malaria. However, it is more disturbing that the eyesore has also become a common sight in major streets in highbrow areas of the powerful and affluent that we know as the real Abuja. Marketplaces, motor parks, green areas, drains, bus stops in Abuja have become easy to reach toilets in the absence of alternatives. The streets of the popular Utako Park in Jabi, the commercial nav of Abuja, where public transport vehicles going in and out of the city converge, is one place you don't want to pass in the morning. As it is, one can hardly walk through here and have a breath of fresh air. The foul stench from feces and urine that attack passerbys leave the environment offensive. Most people walking in the park have turned the walkways into a safe convenience. They are unwilling to pay the tati naira fare in the park's public toilet. Ironically, a remote office of the Abuja Environmental Protection Board, whose main responsibility is to keep the nation's capital clean, is situated right opposite the scene of squalor. A female official of AEPB in the office said their mandate is not to keep the area clean but to catch hawkers. She said they have repeatedly tried to stop people from passing bodily waste in the area but have been threatened with knives and sharp objects by touts in the park. There are four public convenience houses at strategic points inside the park. While it costs 30 naira to use the toilet, 50 naira is for bathing. These facilities are not owned or managed by the government or park authorities, 
but by private individuals. There is no government toilet facility here. It is common to see people cover their noses with their hands or handkerchief or avoid inhaling the foul odor while passing through mostly lonely parts of the popular Wuse market. On the ground stairs leading to other routes in the market area have been turned to latrines. It's even more appalling at the same time surprising that areas like Wuse Zone 3 where the Nigerian Customs Office headquarters is situated have gained notoriety for this indiscriminate act. Abuja residents have pointed out that the absence of public toilet facilities, failure of some houses owners to provide toilets, limited land space and deep-rooted cultural and social norms that have established open defecation as an acceptable practice are factors responsible for this manners. Most houses in the urban area where people live, especially in Abuja, it, it, uh, the system is not a good one. So they are forced to go into an open education system, which is causing a lot of effort to the health of the population of people living in Abuja. It's not just the public toilets, but it boils down to Nigerians as, as citizens. So instead, we need to sensitize ourselves more on uh, personal hygiene. And the government also needs to play its role by providing a lot of mobile toilets in strategic areas. There's a need for Abuja Environmental Protection Board to do more about it because it's awful. It's a problem. It's a very big problem. I think the government should uh, should uh, bring a public toilet and put everywhere. You know, at least at least to reduce the open defecation to curb instances of um, open defecation, I think the government should um, put in place a tax force, so to say, a tax force made up of ordinary people, people that their sole job is to arrest, if I can use that word, offenders, um, find them, and uh, you know, take some necessary steps. I think if they have this this thing in place, find them in some cases, even take them to, you know, do some psychoanalysis on them and see why you a human being will just go and poo in a place when they're not animals. A UNICEF water, health and sanitation expert in Abuja speaks on government plan to ensure all Nigerians use at least latrine toilets by 2025. It would be good if a uh, fund is made available to those who cannot afford to build latrines. Uh, we did analysis of the mix uh, 2017 and we discovered that the 47 million that are practicing open notification can be categorized into three. One is uh, those who are able to bring our money from their pocket to build latrines. So government does not need to support those people. The second category are those who do not have money at all but if supported with loan, they are able to pay back. So there's a need of, for sanitation financing um, by the government especially uh, to support these people. Uh, the third category are those, even when you give them loan, they can't pay back. So these people require some kind of subsidy. So now we are concentrating on the first category, who are being triggered and they are bringing our money, they are building latrines. And at the moment, in Nigeria, there are five LGAs that are now open defecation free. They've been declared open defecation free. So no, no government fund is, has been used in, in those LGAs. But we also have the third category that will require subsidy. And government needs to do something about it. However, health experts are more concerned with the overwhelming health challenges posed by this menace. They say a gram of feces contains approximately 10 million viruses, 1 million bacteria, and a thousand parasite cysts. A top UNICEF official, Zaid Jurji, said in 2017, open defecation has been implicated in many cases of cholera, diarrhea, hepatitis, polio, and typhoid fever.
among other diseases in the country that over 88% of diarrhea in children, the fastest killer of children under the age of 5 in Nigeria is caused by open defecation. Apart from posing a serious menace to the city, these are the glaring health hazards that comes with the prevalence of open defecation in Nigeria's capital, if not reversed as soon as possible.